Now, it's had its fair share of critics over the past few months, but today the government has been defending HS2, the proposed high-speed speed rail link. A new report says the rail line between London and the north of England will boost the British economy by £15 billion a year. And it says regions outside London will benefit the most from the £50 billion project. But critics argue the money would be better spent improving the existing rail network. Richard Lister reports. The HS2 project has been stuck in the sidings as arguments roll on about its costs and benefits. When the plan to create a faster, high-capacity network linking London to the Midlands and then the north of England was proposed, the focus was on the need for speed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of State for Transport... But today, the Transport Secretary's emphasis is that only a new network can carry the growing number of passengers. Can't keep just patching up old railways. This is about capacity. Even if we spend all that money trying to upgrade some of the lines, we would not get the extra capacity that we're going to get as a result of HS2. The government commissioned a report from KPMG to make the case. It says HS2 could eventually generate £15 billion annually for Britain in new business and jobs, mostly in the regions. It says HS2 could bring Leeds a billion pounds a year, and the report says Nottingham and Derby could make more than two billion pounds a year. What it shows is everybody's a winner from HS2, and that includes cities and city regions which are not actually on the route of HS2. And the reason for that is that it frees up capacity on the rest of the network, and therefore the benefits are also going to be felt in the South West, in Wales, Scotland and East Anglia. If it does go ahead, though, the line will cut through existing businesses, homes and beauty spots, and some economists don't believe it's worth the cost. There are lots of problems in the north of England and the Midlands that won't be solved by improved connectivity. We can look at real-world examples such as Doncaster, which have had a fast rail link for decades now, but remain one of the poorest towns in the country. The government makes the point that right now you can get a high-speed train from London to Brussels, but not to Birmingham. It sees HS2 as a vital investment in the nation's infrastructure. But the relaunch of this project is unlikely to silence its many critics. Richard Lister, BBC News, at the Eurostar Terminal at St Pancras. Our business editor, Robert Peston, is with me now. You've been looking at the figures. Do they stack up? Well, the basic argument put forward by HS2 and its advisors, KPMG, uh, is a plausible one. Uh, and that is that when transport links are improved in a particular area, that's good for growth. And the reason for that is that if businesses, for example, can get the goods and services they want from a bigger range of uh, suppliers, that drives down the cost of what they have to pay, which is good for their profitability. Uh, it may indeed improve the quality of what they buy. Similarly, if they have access to a bigger pool of, school, of skilled workers, uh, you know, that uh, could be good for unemployment in a particular area, but also you know, particularly good for, again, for the employer because they can get better qualified people, you know, arguably cheaper. And the, the, the underlying that argument is the, not the notion that HS2 is a great thing because it ships people very fast. It's that it adds new capacity and that then frees up the existing lines to perform much better. So th the heart of it is that the transport system improves. But KPMG itself admits that there is something of a flaw in its analysis, which is that it says it took no account of whether in places like Manchester or West Yorkshire or Derby and Nottingham, where it sees all these big gains, it took no account of whether there's actually a pool of skilled labour there to draw on, and indeed whether or not there is the land available for businesses to expand on uh, or to be set up on. And that, I think many would say, rather undermines the accuracy of this number, this £15 billion a year. So it's an interesting contribution, but it certainly doesn't settle this debate. Robert, thank you very much.